What's up guys, welcome to another 3D Sculpt and Chill. And I'm really excited about this Gariel, which I had made actually a while ago, but I recently realized that I never edited the videos. Now this was one of my YouTube videos that I did live streamed. Uh, so the quality isn't as good as some of my videos when I make them like this, but it's one of my favorite sculpts. So I thought it was worth it to go back, download those videos and make one of these uh, speed paint time-lapse videos. Um, this, he, he was like the first character that was pretty, not technical, just like there was a lot of things where I really didn't know how I was going to pull him off and it was going to, if it was going to turn out well. I drew this from actual Gariels, uh, on, in Procreate, I draw a lot of animals and, um, sometimes I'll do very like obscure animals. So I drew a bunch of Gariels and I made them very cartoony. So it was really fun to go back and sculpt this character and it also really helps me with the 3D app. I'm not that experienced with it. So making characters like this, making difficult characters, making characters when I really have to be creative with the shapes and the blocking. Uh, and I find that's what really helps me a lot with these characters. It's the same thing with drawing, the same thing with creating characters. You want to block everything out and just sort of, sort of doodle, sort of sketch. Um, and with this, I just make the, the basic shapes. And then you sort of learn the tools so you can take advantage of them like this. I'm just masking the top and then I'm twisting, slowly twisting the bottom part uh, off of each mask. And this will just wind up being his turned body. Because uh, that was one of the things that, you know, his body is sort of curved. Like his belly, you can see the front. But his head is sort of turned. I find that I don't, I don't usually do characters they don't look as dynamic if they're just standing straight looking straight so I do try to sort of curve them so you can see the the uh, the curves like in his tail uh, you want to be able to see the different parts of them just in one static pose so that's something that I really really paid attention to with this character uh, the tail I just block together a bunch of squares circles uh, circles I use a lot and here I'm just using the move tool and that's what I usually do to, to make the details on the face and to just make sure everything is symmetrical. I did have some issues with symmetry because somehow he ended up off the center axis. And although you can put it back on the center axis, which I'm not sure if I knew how to do at this point in time, but uh, I, I do sometimes struggle with using the symmetry tool. I find that uh, even if I don't move it, for some reason, sometimes the symmetry can be a little bit off and it won't match. And uh, I, so I really try to pay attention to that because I want to use the symmetry for things like the face, the nose, things like that. Because when you once you start doing separate the, the each side, you're basically just doubling your work. And um, and although in in you know realistically our faces aren't symmetrical, uh, they look better symmetrical, and the workflow is a lot easier if things are symmetrical in 3D, in my opinion. Uh, and the things that I want to make asymmetrical. I can do that by design. You know, I, I physically uh, take one side of it and separate separate the mirror, things like that. But now I'm just smoothing out his tail and just, just kind of smoothing them all out and just sort of uh, making him one piece of clay, essentially, which another thing I've learned to really, really block it out and really be happy with my shapes and be happy with everything before I start uh, before I voxel remesh because once you voxel remesh you know things start to solidify and when I start doing details uh, I don't want to have to go back and voxel remesh the whole thing so you want to make sure that all your elements are attached that you want attached um, so you so you can voxel remesh as little as possible only when you need to because that's the only thing that will can can cause you to lose details and here I'm just trying to figure out the eye sockets and what eyes I should make them and then the bottom part of the jaw, um, which kind of helps with the, the top part of the jaw. Uh, as you can see earlier, I used the tube to make the his, like, his snoot, like the top part of the jaw. But it is a little tricky because when you use a cylinder, then you can get it perfectly straight on axis and you can use the symmetry like I was saying before. With the tube, it's hard to really set it straight, so you're not going to really be able to use symmetry and there I'm just flattening flattening out the the brows and here I'm starting to do fine details like putting the mouth in 
and you know figuring out how I want a smile to be and again you can see I'm using my drawing as as reference that makes it a lot easier for details like that uh, if you can just stick to a drawing uh, and that way you can sort of learn the technical aspects of the application without uh, you know because it's kind of hard to be making up things to create and learning the the program I find it easier to uh, work out the drawing first work out the art so then all you're doing is figuring out the technical aspects and then you can just follow the drawing to the T of course things are going to be a little bit different because things don't don't always translate from 2d to 3d but that's just something that you learn along the way you kind of figure out what looks best and what your sculpt might need uh, for it to look its best the fingers the toes were actually quite difficult because uh, they're very thin so when I remesh them all together uh, sometimes it's, it's a bit hard to it's a bit hard for me to keep control of the edges sometimes the edges start to sort of go a little funny and there's only so much you can um, you can mess with them there's only so much you can sort of stretch them and move them and flatten and smooth because the smaller elements they tend to move so as you hear as you see here with the fins I just duplicate them I just duplicate duplicate reposition duplicate reposition uh, and then I go back and I'm constantly going back to touch up uh, the sculpt and just sort of make sure it has nice planes and by planes you, you know like the the top part of the eyebrow I have it sort of flat uh, the bottom part I have flat his stomach the chest part I have flat so I want to have those nice planes and that those are places that light can really hit and bounce off of and you can have shadows and things like that you have to excuse me I don't have a I don't have a soundproof studio so every sound you hear in the apartment um, comes through the comes through the audio so excuse me about the sounds of other people flushing toilets so this is yeah this is the finally doing the nose and the mouth and I think I might, I might have used no it doesn't look like I was using um, din topo dynamic topography is that it topography um, topology <laughs> dynamic topology uh, I don't really think I knew much about it at this point in time it sort of took me a while to figure out why that's useful um, because it was a little confusing figuring out like voxel remeshing and subdividing and using dynamic topology a lot of this stuff was really really a different language and it's taken me a long time to sort of figure out how to use it not only how to use it but uh, when to implement it and when when it works at its best I think that's the the main thing that I I'm happy that I'm learning and I'm also still learning and improving and you know learning from other creators and from the the Facebook group and things like that um, and now I'm just giving him some some details you can see the details are sort of there I'll sort of uh, make them slightly early on in the sculpt and then I go in and I use the crease tool high intensity very small and then I just um, accentuate all of these his crevices you know his his little um you know his little rolls they're not really rolls i guess they can be rolls but i kind of like that in my in my sculpts i do that around the arms around the legs and actually nowadays when i make arms and legs i'll usually not connect i won't voxel mesh the arms and the legs together with the body i'll just use inflate and i'll inflate around so it looks like a skin fold so then you don't really you can't tell that the arm isn't connected uh, to the body and that sort of allows me a little more flexibility if I needed if I decide I wanted to reposition the arm or if I decide to paint the arm a different color it's just a lot easier to just select the arms and tap paint all and then they're then they're a different color uh, but ultimately I just like the way it looks certain things when you don't uh, box or remesh them together uh, like now like I'm for example this jaw I might do two separate parts so then that crevice in the middle would be very very deep because it's two separate parts but here it works uh, pretty well and I did a pre pretty decent job uh, painting it which helps to sort of show that separation 
and painting is uh, painting is a fun part because once I'm there, I know that I've pretty much got all the hard work done. Uh, the coloring has always been pretty fun. I love using different textures to sort of give it uh, whatever type of look that I want. But I think that's it's really important to really make a, a sculpt stand out is to use different textures and and to have them sort of coexist because that's that's how it is in reality. You know, our skin is different than our eyes. It's different than our hair. Of course, I don't. I, we can't do hair on, on Nomad Sculpt, but and I don't really know how to use Blender. I'm still. I haven't gone back to my my tutorial that I started. I think it was like a 15 minute tutorial, and I'm well past like an hour trying to figure it out. It just feels so. Uh, everything feels. Everything makes sense on the iPad when I'm doing it this way and using the stylus. When I'm using the computer, it just feels like. It's just so hard for me to for me to get it and for me to figure it out. It just feels so unintuitive. Um, I actually feel the same way about Photoshop nowadays that I use Procreate. Everything is so simple and so quick and right at my fingertips. Whereas on Photoshop, I have to go to like a, a bunch of menus and go <clears throat> from this side of the keyboard to that side of the keyboard. And I don't know. It's just very interesting how, how things have changed so much and desktop apps for me, uh, feel a little bit behind in there. I don't know, I just feel like iPad is the future. Touchscreen is, is the future, so it's a little weird. Obviously there's, um, obviously there's still just as much need for our computers, but, uh, and obviously with editing and stuff like that, the computer's way, way better. But I'm looking forward to things improving with the iPad and technology getting better and having more uh, tools at my disposal at my disposal with the iPad. Even if it's just Nomad Sculpt, I can't wait for the, the, the update should be coming out soon. I thought for some reason I thought it was going to be out in mid-August. But here we are, it's September 3rd today and there is still no update. Um, you know, it's going to take a while for me to kind of figure out how to work. I keep hearing about instances. I don't know what that is. Uh, subsurface scatter, I believe. I'm really excited about. I think that's going to be really cool, and I can't wait to experiment with that. But um, because even in this, like things like the 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 tail, the end bit of the tail, the fingers, things like that. There's a lot of things that could have used subsurface scatter. Uh, I love working with lighting and doing things with lighting, and subsurface scatter is an important aspect of that. One other thing that I, I really wish uh, was present that I see in other applications, other 3D applications, and I feel like this tells Nomad apart from those other ones, there seem to be more of a ambient, like the shadows are not always black. Like I feel like in Nomad Sculpt, the shadows are always black. They're always, um, I don't know, they, they just always feel black. Whereas in other programs, if there's something in like a white room or a character, uh, or something with a lot of colors, the shadow will have a bit of that color with it. And I don't feel that with Nomad. Uh, and I think that would really, I think that would be, that would really help. Because sometimes I, I create something and I just feel like the flatos look, the, the flatos, the shadows look a bit flat because there's no color in the shadows. And of course Nomad does work with the the reflection or the the reflective surfaces and, re and reflections so sometimes there is a bit of color in the reflections and things like that but i just wish i had the ability to alter some of the shadows somehow uh, i'm not really sure how that works or how technically how that works but it's just something i've noticed from you know it's big brother applications i'm always looking at other artists and 3d artists and just seeing what what separates my art from theirs i think that's the key uh, I save artwork that I like. If there's something I like about it, I save it to my phone. I try to figure out how I can do it with Nomad. And I think another um, big plus for me with Nomad is I, since this is my first 3D application that I'm learning and that I'm using to create 3D stuff, I don't know the limitations. I'm not aware of the limitations. So I feel like I can do anything. Whereas someone might say, oh, you know, you, you can't do this. It's like Zebra, you need ZBrush to do this, or you need Maya, or you need. Uh, 3D Studio Max, or what's the other one? I feel like there's another one. Uh, Blender. Uh, you need Blender to do this. And of course, I know that there are 
things that Nomad Scout Sculpt can't do, things that those programs are much better at. But I'm never too concerned with that. The only thing that I'm concerned with is what I can create with Nomad and how I can make my sculpts in Nomad uh, look amazing. I'm not concerned with retopology. I don't do animation. I don't work for a game company. I'm not trying to sell these to a game company. I'm not trying to make movies. I don't know how to animate. I don't even know what applications I would use for that. Uh, I'm just making art. I'm just having fun sculpting and, and creating 3D art. Uh, and that's really my goal. Um, things on Facebook are doing very, very well. A lot of people, <clears throat> it's funny, these people really love the Squirtle uh, design. Shout out to Troy the Art Boy on Instagram and, and TikTok. He drew it. I did the um, I did the 3D sculpt, and people are really, really digging that. Uh, so make sure you guys check out Facebook. Add me on Facebook uh, because I don't, it's it's really, really strange how big the community is and how much people share on Facebook too. I think that's the key with these apps. Um, on Facebook, people share, and TikTok, people share as well. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys will share this. I hope this maybe helped you out a little bit. And I hope you enjoy my sculpt of this Gary. So keep drawing, keep sculpting. I'll catch you all in the next video.